It's a pleasure to be at Madison once again uh, and to be here uh, on a day when we have not yet been snowed in or snowed out uh, from the campus, particularly sitting as we are in a building uh, which is difficult of access without walking over the grass on, in Madison. I'd like to begin by saluting Fairleigh Dickinson University and the Global Outreach Program and the people who are in charge of that program for uh, not just a vision, but an actual implementation of a vision uh, far faster than one would have thought possible uh, as late as just a year ago. And so it's a pleasure to be a part of that implementation of a great vision of global citizenship. It's also a pleasure for me to be here today to introduce our uh, distinguished speaker for this evening. Uh, Noeline Heiser comes from Singapore, which is a tiny, tiny island lost somewhere out in Southeast Asia, but which has the distinction of producing some of the most intelligent diplomats and international civil servants anywhere in the world. The, the contribution of Singapore to ideas, to commitment, to personnel is absolutely unprecedented in a United Nations, which after all sees representatives and uh, workers from 191 countries around the world. <clears throat> Noeline Heiser is uh, the head of UNIFEM, which is the women's organization in the United Nations. She's headed it for almost 10 years. Uh, it is for me, therefore, a privilege uh, to, to not just to know her, but also to be able to introduce her to you tonight, uh, coming as she does uh, from long travels. And I hope that she will tell us something about her travels today. Uh, but to introduce a person who, uh, despite her small size and youthful looks and uh, represents, uh, unfortunately or fortunately, half of the population of the world. And so I would like, in introducing her, uh, to warn the men in this audience, uh, please beware. Uh, you are going to be put to the test tonight. And so uh, uh, put on your uh, bulletproof vests uh, before I hand the microphone over to her. Noelin Heiser. Um, it's a real honor for me to be here this evening. Um, and I'm very pleased that you uh, have focused a lot on the issue of globalization and uh, global par um, the partnership within the globe. We are living at a time where to be global means that anything that occurs in one part of the world affects another. Our destinies are linked. The globalization of and the labor movement of people. And I say this because I just came back this morning from Ciudad Juarez. How many of you know where that is? One, two, three. It is a border town between Mexico and the United States. It is a border town where the transit of drugs, 80% of drugs from Colombia for the United States come via that town. It is a transit town for migrants. Almost all migrants that goes into California to the fields, to, to, the, to the plantations, to the services, to the domestic sector, stop at that town as a transit place. The Maquila Doris that produces the clothes we use, the things we use, are based at that town. And I was there because 
I was invited by the government of Mexico and also by the women's groups there to investigate the killing of 280 women who have disappeared and killed brutally because of the interconnection of the narcotic trade, the pornography trade, and the trade in human parts. I say this as a starting point because very often I don't think we make the connections in our lives about what is happening. And the United Nations, the reason why I have, I was, I have been invited was because I represent the United Nations Development Fund for Women. And people see to the United Nations as establishing the norms and standards of what is acceptable in human communities in the 21st century. And the killing of those women have gone with impunity. And nobody, despite all the pressures, were taking any action. And they wanted international community to come in, using the norms and standards, the rights, the, the rights framework that we have established by all the governments in the world, to use that as the measure of the kind of actions that need to be done. And of course, there is no way in which we can implement any of this unless there is political will. And the United Nations is known for its capacity to pull together member states to establish frameworks that are useful. And I want to stress tonight's talk on the framework that has been established on women's human rights. Because we have this framework, it has been much easier for me to do my work. My work focuses on three areas. There's a whole area of economic security and rights. We are living in a globalized world, but the effect of globalization has been uneven. There has been a concentration of wealth in fewer and fewer hands. There's a generation of inequality. There are benefits and there are risks. But increasingly, what we find is that the risks and the opportunities fall on different population. You find that many of the opportunities fall on people who are educated, who are much younger, who come from countries who are better positioned in the global system, and those who bear the costs of globalization or the risks of globalization are very often the poorer groups of people. So the effects of globalization, the cause of globalization, is born extremely differently. And you find that out of that, many of the women in the global world are still located in very specific structures in the global system. Whilst I was in Ciudad Juarez, I also was invited by the first Women's Summit of Indigenous Women, opened by um, the Peace Prize winner, uh, uh, Rigobato Manchu. And there, it was extremely clear to me that many of these women, in fact, are the ones who are supplying the unskilled work, the migrant labor, for those precisely the domestic work that I talk about in, in um, the south of the United States, the plantations, the agricultural sector. And I interviewed many of these women, and they are involved in migration. They are, in, they are the ones who are very much linked with the illegal migration. They are found in the informal sector. They are found in your casual sector. They have to pay tremendous costs just to get across the border to supply the work that nobody in this country wants. And they describe the risks 